And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Cameron Mully Show with me is Ming Chen. What's up, everybody? And I am Cameron Mully. So, a little bittersweet today, last episode of the summer before I before I head off to continue my your, your journey. My my college projects. Don't worry, I will not be going dark off the internet, although staying off the internet would be good for me, but Yeah. But you know, I'm I'm ready to you know, get back to work. Oh my god, I sound, sound so corporate right now. No, no you yeah, guys, Hey like, man. I like, you know, I'm not ready to ready to get back into it, you know, just getting back to I I guess like classes, but like like really going out there hanging out with friends, hanging out with with all, all sorts of people, doing my stuff. It, you know, it, we're, we're looking forward to getting the Mario Kart team up and running. It was good having you back. It, Not going to lie. It, it always, and, it always it, is. In good, good and bad. <laughs> oh, oh, no, Most... oh, no. This Yankee team has been amazing for content. Sure. There has been sure. no shortage of crap that they don't do over a, <laughs> over a week. I mean, it, it, it's been comical for sure. And uh, last last week I said I felt bad. This week I feel really bad. <laughs> like what? It, the, like, I, the fact that they're on a nine-game losing streak isn't what pisses me off. Like, I want it to get bad. You know what was you know the last time the Yankees had a ten-game losing streak? Yes, but please tell the audience. I, I heard the stat today. 1913. Okay, pre-Babe Ruth. No, no, no. Not, not just pre-Babe Ruth. Okay. pre World War One. <laughs> That's a pre World War One. Austria Hungary was still a country the last time the, the Yankees lost 10 games. Archduke Ferdinand was alive. He was alive. When the Yankees lost had a 10 game leaving streak. President? I do not know. Woodrow Wilson. Wow. Wow. This is, I mean, pre Great Depression, correct? This is pre Roaring Twenties. Yes. Wow. I don't even know what the hell was going on. This is pre-prohibition, too. Sure. Like, you know how many you know how many amendments were in the Constitution? Was there the indoor time? plumbing last time? <laughs> yes, I, I, <laughs> think, think, really I think. I think. Although, I don't think it was widespread. Sure. Sure. So people were pooping in outhouses last time. Yeah, the yes, Yankees had the yes games outhouses were still a thing. The Yankees lost 10 games in a row. Wow. Wow. I mean, you know how many amendments were in the U.S. Constitution? I do not. No, please tell me. Eighteen. Eighteen. <laughs> Women still couldn't vote the last time. Right. The Yankees lost ten games. Uh, in this a is pre-prohibition, row. correct? Yeah, yes. Pre-prohibition. I, yeah. I said pre-prohibition. You want to go through all the major hist- historical events? I mean, did you make a list? No, no, I didn't make a list. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a history buff, sure. like, sorta. Yeah. Like, I'm a casual history buff. You know, both world wars. Yes. So like, like Europe's borders were reshaped a million times. Yes. Although that always happens. So like, y- you had women getting the right to vote. Okay. Like domestically in pre, the U.S. Pre suffrage act. In the, okay. In the U.S. Like, uh, <laughs> Woodrow Wilson was president. So okay. So here's some iconic men who took office. Okay. Since. Since uh, the Yankees last lost ten games, yes. so let's see. Um, FDR was president. Okay. Yep. Yep. Like the New Deal. Enti- Pre New Deal. Like his entire term as president was the Yankees right. didn't lose ten games in a row. Yeah. Uh, more than two terms. Let's see. Look, like. Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. Yeah. Richard Nixon. So oh, but Watergate. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Pre Vietnam War. Yeah. Ronald Reagan, he was president. JFK, preaching. Yeah, 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 JFK was president. Yeah, th- that that happened. The, the, the civil rights movement. Every do you have any uh, era Yankees era suck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my I can't do impressions. That was terrible. But yeah, it's my JFK impression. Oh, oh my. I, I assume he was a Red Sox fan. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah, that entire family's Red Sox fans. Yeah. Um, I mean, the New York Yankees are a terrible baseball team. <laughs> I think the Yankees won a couple of World Series when he was president. Yeah. I know 1961 was during the Kennedy administration. But the, but the reason why I'm talking about major historical events was everything I mentioned throughout all of those years. That was between the last time the Yankees lost 10 games in a row. And potentially tonight, 
And you know what? We're, we're, we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch the first uh, couple innings of this game because, as of right now, it is six twenty-seven. Yeah, first we'll pitch. hit seven oh five. It's scheduled yeah. for seven oh five. So maybe we can witness some history right here. Could we definitely just maybe. could? Yeah, just maybe. Now you did not accidentally stumble into a history podcast. This no. is a sports show. Yeah, Again, but <laughs> all of the stuff that happened since the last time the Yankees lost ten games in a row. This is a low. You know a new low. Who you know knew? what happened in Yankee history since the last time they had a ten game losing streak? Please do tell. You know how many of those twenty seven championships that they love to talk about? How you know how many of those happened? Since the last time the Yankees lost 10 games. How in many? Row. All 27 of them. <laughs> 27? All of All them. All 27. All of them. All of them. That's insane. All 27 happened after 1913. <laughs> since Dude, 110 years. Who on this planet was alive? Well, I can tell you there probably won't be a 28th this year. So. <laughs> no, really? Probably not happening. All right. Listen, that's bad, but isn't this what you wanted? Yeah, yes, this, this is, is what you wanted. Want. No, no, this is just funny. You got what you wanted. Be careful what you wish for, ladies no, and gentlemen. No, no, this is funny. No, no, I'm not pissed off. I'm just talking about how it's funny. It's funny. You know what angry me looks like. Sure. You don't, Th yes. This is not You're not angry. ranting and raving. You're not yelling into like, the microphone. My posture. You're not blowing like out. my relaxed posture right Yeah. Now. Yes. I'm chilling. I'm slumped back. Yes. I'm kicking back, relaxing. If I was angry, I'd be hunched over like this, and I'd be like, This is exactly what you wanted, because if they tank this bad, then they'll actually do something. Also, also, you know one thing about tanking? If the Yankees pick is in the top six, it won't be affected by that luxury tax rule. Really? And Mark... So, at this point, Mark, why not go for that? My words right now. Write it down. If the New York Yankees are in a situation where they might be able to win the draft lottery, Major League Baseball will bring it for them. Yeah. Yeah. What, why not? I mean, it, it, they're, they're good at that. Come on. Remember the, the Lafreniere draft lottery? Sure. It worked. Yeah. They, they knew for they What was it? 8%? They, they had 8% odds? They weren't going to let. No, there was like a 1% chance. 1%. Okay. I take it back. Mystery team. Winning lottery, and then there was like an eight percent chance of the Rangers winning it. So and they did, and they so did. Like, no, they, there was no way they weren't going to let a big market team get their get their hands on Alexei Lafreniere, who, by the way, signed a you know like a first overall pick, so like signed their next deal are usually like really big money. Yeah, Lafreniere signed one today for only like two years, and I think like two and a quarter million. I mean, you, you know who's, like, second contract was bigger? Who's that? Nail Yakupov. <laughs> Nail Yakupov's <laughs> second contract was bigger than Alexei Nail Lafreniere. Yakupov. Yes, Nail Yakupov. Wow. That, that, that's a name. That's, yeah. That's a name, all right. So, yeah, like, Lafreniere was billed as this generational talent. No. Nope. NHL was going to stop at nothing to let him, or to not let him go to... Either the Rangers, the Leafs, the Pens, like any big time team where he'd be in a marketable spot. Yeah. Well, they're getting a deal. And and this is this is what <laughs> brings it back to baseball. Yes. What do, who who do you think is Rob Manfred's favorite team? Like, like in terms of all the MLB owners when it comes to revenue sharing, who do you think their favorite team is? I mean, the Yankees. Uh, that's they, what they, I would they, guess. They, yeah, they, when they bring more revenue, they're terrible, and they're still packing the house every night. Yep. Yankee Stadium is a tourist attraction. I said yep. this last week. Yep. They, uh, they are. They stadium still packed. Nine game losing streak doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. People want to go to Yankee Stadium, like, like, win like, or lose, doesn't like, matter. I see my friends who like don't care about baseball. I see them posting photos from Yankee Stadium on their Snapchat stories and their Instagram stories. And I'm like, like I'm not mad at them. Like, I have no right to be mad at them because they don't know any better. Right. Meanwhile, that that's just like, yep, that's that's just how 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 it goes. Uh, attendance thirty eight thousand. 105. That's a <laughs> that's a lot, man. For a Tuesday night. Tuesday night and a nine game losing streak. That's <laughs> okay. Yeah. The other yeah. teams go could wish for that. They, they, the Orioles are leading the AL. They don't get that. I was there. I went to the game last night. It, it was half empty. It was like, <laughs> all 
I was, yeah, it was bad. Man, what's that I, ESPN article? The Ming of the Hill Club. Oh, uh, well, oh, I, oh, I, oh, oh, it's your fantasy team. Yeah, we'll get to that. I, we'll get uh, to for that. For a second, I thought there was an actual ESPN article. No. Oh, called Ming of the Hill. I mean, that would be cool, but no, not that is my like fantasy Camden team. Yards would introduce something. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. What's not... been going on with the the Blue Jays? Blue Jays? Oh, that they lost, to, or the the Orioles. Sorry, <laughs> that they lost to the. Uh, they, they they won last night in ten. It was tough to see, especially knowing how much you hate you hate the Blue. I Jays. hate the Blue Jays. Uh, last night's attendance at Camden Yards, first place in the AL, first place team, great team. Attendance twenty thousand six hundred twelve. And that's <laughs> bullshit. I was one of those. That sucks. <laughs> twenty thousand. I mean, oh God, you were at that game. I was. I of was course, at that game. Of course. That, that that's a that's a textbook Ming moment. Right I there. think I'm a curse. I can't remember the last time they won when I, I mean, was hey, there. I mean, hey, I'm still holding the the Devils Leafs game with that. Oh, that was my the, fault. With sure, the, the win streak ending like that. Thirteen I, game I, win streak I, ended I, the day I, the night I went. Yes. Yeah, I squarely blame that on you. You should and, blame and me. The, the, the I blame zebras. myself. You blame you and the zebras for that one. Yes. That that is and take a me blaming the refs for something is a huge deal. Sure. I never blame the refs for shit when it comes to my teams. Yeah. How long is this losing streak going to go for? I want it to go as long as humanly possible. Okay. Well, they got no. two more against the lowly Nationals, but, you know, they, they couldn't even beat them last night. So this could continue. And then they got three against the Rays, which they're still playing great despite all the controversies. Wonder Franco. Yes. Yeah, he's, apparently he got, he got placed on some kind of leave. Yeah, basically it's, uh, he's. Yeah, his career is done. Like there, there's no way you can have that much of a smoking gun, or two of them apparently. Yeah, yeah, so two, multiple, no, smoking multiple smoking guns. Like there's multiple. My God, what a sick bastard! My God. Yeah, yeah, he's done, and it's. I mean, I mean hey, he's out of the division, but like. Yeah, thank God. I, well, I mean, I don't mean he's celebrating this by any means, and you know, he's a scumbag, yeah, and he's... listen, and you know, it's until proven guilty, but. This is not looking good for him. However, yeah, he is a star player in the AL East for a rival team, uh, a team the, yeah, the, that is chasing my favorite team for for the lead in the division. I would love that first round playoff by, not gonna lie. And this is a huge blow to them, as well as Shane McClanahan being out for this year and dude, probably what next did year. They do with their pitchers, the, the, every single one of the pitchers they develop ends up getting hurt. There's something. Very wrong with how the Rays develop pitchers. Yes, apparently. Sure, they throw gas when they're on the mound. Yeah, or they perform, and I guess I, I, does it even matter that they'll bring up random NPCs who will throw like nope. ninety nine miles an hour yeah. with insane movement and and put up like a three point two ERA. Yeah, what a turn of events, though. Who could have seen any of this coming? Like, who the hell is Michael Rasmussen? <laughs> who the hell is that? Yeah. He ended up taking a perfect game to the ninth yeah. last year. Yeah. I, the, the, they had good luck. I don't know, good development, good drafting, but, man, it looks like their luck is starting to run out right now. So, what a, yeah, not good. Not good. However, um... I mean, there's still two back of the Orioles, and uh, that's a slim bleed. So, <laughs> I can't, not gonna lie, you know, does this doesn't make me happy per se, but it it helps your team from a competitive standpoint, right? And so, from that standpoint, yes, I gotta be a little happy that <sighs> the bad things are happening to the Rays. I guess is that I don't I don't I don't know how to phrase this. Yeah, I'm in a position I'm not used You're to. You're happy that. A superstar young shortstop yes. who's gonna torment you for the next fifteen years. Us torment and, uh, us. Yeah, torment, torment us. 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 You're in the division too. Yeah, yeah. Who's gonna torment us for the next fifteen years? We're happy yeah. that he is no longer a threat to any of our teams. Yeah. I will say, I not a lot of prospects have scared me as much as Wander. Yeah. Franco yeah. Out. He five tool player. Five tool player. Yeah. In my division, and the Rays ended up giving big money to him. Also, yeah. like the, the Rays, oh, are, yeah. never, the Rays yeah. are never going to give money to anybody ever. Yeah, again. I'm sure there's a clause saying they can get them have to pay them all that money. Like if you are caught engaging in sexual activities with a minor, this is null and void. 
I, that's a reasonable clause to put in any contract, no, 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 or uh, Major League Baseball or otherwise. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Or imagine if they still have to pay. To, imagine being the insurance company. Ooh, no, I I would fight that to the nail. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's one thing insurance companies hate doing, it's actually doing what you pay them. The right, <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure every major league. Any professional athlete has some kind of morals clause built in their contract. Yeah, Since yeah. as we've proven time and time again, athletes no, have no, no you, morals. You, you can get away with it if you get like a DUI. Sure. But if, if you kill someone. I mean, I mean Tony La Russa's or, gotten away with it like, what, 10 times? Like, <laughs> yeah, Tony La Russa. Well, well see, he's an old baseball guy. Right. Like, he, he has enough people who he knows. Yeah. Yeah, but this is, yeah. The, I, I didn't see this. Literally came out of left field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, hey, I, I have an unboxing. I have something here. Oh, shit, for real? Uh, which I thought you'd be interested in. So I'm, I'm going to get... You have an unboxing. I do have an unboxing knife right here. Let's... You have, uh, you have a knife specifically? For oh, actually, knife? I don't need this. There's a, there's a pull oh. tab here, so... Oh, yeah, oh you, I just... You, really you, you just want to show off your right, CSGO knife. This... Yes. Okay, so you will have to end up using your CS gun. Then. Yeah, let's hope I don't cut myself here. What do you have here? Well, Cameron. Okay, I was I was wondering what this was. There we go. All right. Something I bought off eBay. Thought maybe you'd be interested oh, in. Oh, uh, here, I'll let you on. Oh, uh, oh. I'll let you unwrap the rest of that right dude, there. Dude, my my hands are all greasy. That's okay. I mean, like it's not it's not a Mickey Mandel rookie card by any means. It is a rookie card of sorts, though. I, I, see, it. I see it. Oh, my God. You had to pay the, for this? Oh, my they, God. Yes. Pretty cool, right? Uh, it, describe to the audience what you were looking at. It is a Ming Chen J and Silent Bob reboot card. Yes. This is official card from Skybox, oh. a division of Upper Deck. This. <laughs> you had to pay for this? I they never they were supposed to send me samples and I never got any so now I, I so I, I bought them for the I think I got one of them for like ninety eight cents the other one was a little more the other was like three ninety nine here's one of Jay and Silent Bob right yeah here. oh that must have been a throw in right because yeah, I'm yeah, not in yeah, I love he just threw these in because he didn't want them but yeah. that's the that's the yeah, that's, that, that's Jay and Kevin and that yeah one. all right these must these must have been like commons that he didn't want all right that but this. Dude, this is this. Like package. This is pristine. It's pretty cool. There's like this foil is, on there. This is encased. It didn't matter if my hands were greasy. Yeah. And also in the set, if you're lucky, there are Ming Chen autograph cards. There are Ming Chen I don't have one yet, cards? but there are Ming Chen autograph cards. Ooh. So let me uh, let me take you back. Uh, Upper Deck contacted me. It was like, hey, we want to do autograph cards. We'll pay you X amount per autograph. And they sent me a sheet with little stickers on them. And I think I signed 800. Is it 800? Ow! During the pandemic, so maybe it was two years ago. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, then I had to put them in, a, seal them in an envelope, send them back. And, uh, yeah, it was hey, it was a nice paycheck, too. I'm not going to lie. I was like, can I do more of these? Like, can, you know, can you get on a major league roster so we can make more cards? You know, like, no, I'm in my 40s. I have no athletic talent. I'm like, okay, well... So this is, uh, yeah. So, but I have my own upper deck card, dude. This, this is my Griffey 89 upper deck card number one rookie card right here. This is official right here. Convention oh, exclusive. Oh, man. Ming Chen as himself. Snoochy boochies, everybody. So <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? I gotta read the back of this. Go for it. Go for it. Hold on. Now, there are no stats back there because I have no stats to speak of, but... I don't. Does it say any? I think it says Ming Chen. Some are there not, words? No, they give you like a Wikipedia bot. Oh, they, they give you a Pokédex entry. Okay. Ming Chen is an actor, web designer, and reality television star. That's a really nice way. Of yes. It. He co-hosts a panel at the comic convention. This is in the, the movie. in the movie. Yes. I, I still haven't seen it. It's good. With with fellow stars Walt Flanagan, Brian Johnson, and Mike Zapp. Yeah. Guys who I have all met. I mean, the guys who have made a peer. No, no, Mike, Walt, and Brian came on the show. Yes. With uh, Brian Quinn. And this is pretty cool. Uh, there's a number. This is numbered. I've met Mike. Four hundred two of four ninety nine. So somewhat rare. And uh, yeah, got my own card. 
And uh, there are others in the set. There's a purple one, a couple autograph cards. I mean, listen, I, you know, I, I collected cards. I love sports cards. The, you know, this maybe doesn't come close to, say, the Billy Ripken era card, which I also own, but we're, we're getting close there. It's certainly no first edition Charizard, but no, but it, it is it, not. It, it, oh, should I be a Post Malone? Should I wear it around my neck? Oh <laughs> my God. I should do that. I should get the holder, right? Should I wear it around oh my neck? My God, like Post dude. Malone? Oh my God. Here's the thing you're not Post Malone. No, and this is not whatever card he's got in his thing. How much is that thing worth? Wait, wait. Wait, does Post Malone actually wear a first edition Charizard card? I believe thing? so, yeah. You never saw this? He's got like a, yeah. Yeah, he wears it around his neck. Why? Because he can. Because he can. Um, but, I mean, Post Malone, legit, he's actually a legit, uh, I know he plays Magic. I guess, I, I guess he wore, I thought it was a Magic card he wore around his neck, actually. I don't know if it was a Pokemon card, but I may be long, uh, wrong on that. <laughs> he, he does wear a card around his neck, though, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Post Malone did not wear a first. All right, somebody card, does. Card. Okay. Somebody wears some kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, the Pokemon cards are the only cards I ever collect. Okay, I think it's a magic card that he wears. No, I have card. a safe full of those that are probably worth in total a few hundred bucks. Whoa, all right. And if you sit on them, they'll go, they'll go up even more. Yeah, I'm sitting on them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I had to drive back from Baltimore. I, I was asked to teach a podcast class that they videoed for a college down there. And I was like, hey. Oh, you're a, college, you're a professor now. Not professor. quite. Not quite. I was just, you know, a podcast expert, I guess, that they shot. So I shot that this morning. But I went down yesterday. I'm like, hey, let's go to the game. Let's go to the game. So I hit Camden for the first time in over three years. Damn. It's fun. Sat in the bleachers. Saw a good game up until the 10th. You know, it was. Uh, you went home miserable. I mean, you never want to see your team lose, and you never want to see your yeah. team lose in the tenth. Yeah. And you know, you never want to see your team lose because the manager made a horrible bullpen, <laughs> bullpen decision. So, which, in my opinion, he did. So, uh, you know, long story short, uh, it was tied in, into the ninth. Uh, Felix Bautista pitched the ninth, threw eight pitches. Uh, really, they took him out, after and uh, and they did not put him in. Back uh, into the no, ten. I kind of, I kind of get it because you don't want to, you don't want to burn him out. Eight pitches, he, and he's pitched multiple innings before. He's he's made four uh, or five out saves. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, mainly they were on the road, but still. I, I see both schools of thought here. Yeah, and what happens in the top of the tenth? Uh, first batter, first pitch, boom, two run home run. So, <laughs> bam. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mike Bauman, who got sent down today. So <laughs> he got sent down after. Oh, I mean, what do you want him to do? Hey, he that's sucked. accountability right there. <clears throat> Oddly, no. Here's an odd stat, though. He he's, I don't know if there's a term for relievers that come in and steal wins. He's nine and zero. Oh. What? <laughs> he's nine and zero oh, because he comes in and he steals wins. So that is why wins don't matter. You're right. I you're right. Run. I know. I'm very win. You know, I, I tell it wins, but yeah, you're right. Especially for relievers, but yeah. Well, all right. No, he's nine and one now. So <laughs> nine and one. What are you gonna do? It's ba that's baseball, Susan. Taylor, like talking about going to sporting events and being miserable when your team loses. I I didn't realize how much of a weird and like kind of bad experience going to a sporting event is until like a couple weeks ago. I went to. Actually, no, it's like the first weekend of the month. I went to, I went to um, the two Metallica concerts at MetLife Stadium. Yeah. So it was like, like I remember leaving those and being like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is so much better than going to a game. But like, I'm walking out. I was guaranteed to walk out happy of both of those shows. Sure. Sure. Also, it didn't suck that they closed with really good songs. Like it's Metallica. I mean, it's Metallica. I mean, they they do talk about a library. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the concert that probably went three hours. I imagine. Yeah. That, okay. The concert they went on at like eight forty five, and then they went off at like eleven. So wow. Yeah, it was around like do I remember they're they're like in their sixties. Sure, but they can they can still rock, man. Oh, dude, no, no, yeah, believe me. 
as someone who the first hand that they, they still got it. Yeah, for sure. Wow. I, so that so you left happy both times. I left happy both and, times. It was not like when I left that Devils game, like absolutely just cranky and miserable. Uh, I've been there. Uh, I've I left last night after a crushing loss. It, it's it was awful. Uh, you know, you you were played in in your head. Um, you know, all they needed was one hit. It would have won. <laughs> all they needed was one key hit. Uh, or you know, hey, if that foul ball was another six inches to the right, they would have won. Oh, but... hit. Here we got it. That gamma to Nick McLeod. Crap. Oh, Nate McLeod. Yeah, that, Nate that, McLeod. that ball. Uh, two thousand. I think it was twenty twelve. Was twenty twelve Yankees ALCS. ALDS. ALDS. Uh, that there was a ball that I I swear you're gonna put it on your grid. Bounced off the foul pole, but it was called foul, and uh, I I feel Yankees one and five. I feel yeah, it they changed won that game. Like what, CC went the distance. He did, game. but I feel I I feel would have turned the tide of the game. But whatever, we'll I never mean, know. Yeah, obviously, you know, home run in a close game. We'll never game, know. The Yankees didn't really hit in that game either. No, but well, they hit enough. <laughs> they, hit, they hit enough. Game, so. game five, I think they only scored like three runs or, or two runs. Or um, I mean, the MVP of that series was Raul Ibanez. Remember, he, he had two walk-offs, right? Yeah, I, I remember Raul Ibanez. Remember Raul Ibanez, formerly of the, the Seattle Mariners, I believe. And the Phillies. And, and the Phillies, yeah. Yeah, good player. Good player. Yeah, uh, he was solid. That's a guy who I wouldn't mind seeing as Yankee manager. Yeah. Or have him come back this year right now as a player. It's like, it, it, he can't do much worse. Yeah, he can't do much worse. I, I mean, like, the Yankees, they did call up Everson Pereira and Oswald Yes. Cruz, and they are giving them romance. But I, I'm coming to be honest. I'm not crazy about Everson Pereira. Really? Because he has a super high strikeout rate in the minors. That typically never translates. Well. Right. No, like, you're sure, right. That, does Everson Pereira hit the ball hard? Yeah. Like when he makes contact. But that's literally everybody in the Yankee lineup. It's like, oh, he hits the ball so ah, oh, his max exit velocity. <laughs> you gotta make contact first to get yeah, exit velocity. Yeah, you have to make good swing decisions. Right. Now, Jason Dominguez, that that now we're talking. You that you wanna talk about skills that translate to the next level? His swing decision metrics. Oh my god. Amazing. Fantastic. Although, although I guarantee when Dominguez comes up to the bigs. And he's in AAA right now, and he went three for six last night in this first AAA game. Smacked the cover off the ball. So maybe... I swear to God, if he's not on the roster next year, I'm going to lose it. I mean... I hope Dominguez is a guy they're fast-tracking like Volpe. Uh, I, is he a hometown boy? And uh, is he? Did he no, did, no, no, is there a picture of him as no, a youngster in a Yankee there's, uniform? There's no real marketability about him. He's okay, an Italian kid from Central Jersey. Okay, but you know, fast track him. What, what's it going to hurt right now? Hey, whoa, is he not going to outslug Jake Powers and Billy McKinney? <laughs> Please. I fast track him like that kid from the Angels, where they just drafted and they called up already. Dude, that's that's how that's either how you get the most out of your prospects, or that's how you ruin them. Right. Well, we'll see. All right. Now, before the Yankee game starts, I just want to pivot just a bit. Okay. To, uh, the Giants. Yes. They play a preseason game, and like the last week's preseason game against the Panthers was the like I saw a lot. That I liked. Okay, such the, as? The first drive, that was maybe the most confident I have ever seen Daniel Jones look. All right. Really? He threw the ball with, with conviction. There was there was something there that wasn't there before. You saw it in spurts at times. You saw it in the playoff game last year against the Vikings. You saw it against the Colts. In week 17 to clinch the playoff spot. You you saw it more and more as the year went on. You saw him, you saw it in that that drive against Washington where he took him 92 yards down the field and scored a touchdown. You saw it you saw it in a lot of spots. 
And that is the type of... That's the type of player you want to see. That's what you want to see out of Daniel Jones. All right. So you, as well as him, both feeling confident then. Oh, yeah. And, okay. And I love how much he was going to Darren Waller. He made three catches on that drive. Two of them going for first downs. Those were – and by the way, you got the wrong game up. But I know. That's, last, that's this week, but yes. No, but like the – Oh, Darren Waller is being incorporated into this offense in a big way based off of that drive, and it is like, – I am very much looking forward to it. Uh, eight for nine, 69 yards, and a touchdown. Now, of course, preseason, but that's – hey, man. That's salivating. Pretty good stats. Pretty good stats. Uh, Jalen Hyatt also caught a touchdown, and – I feel this is a really important part of the touchdown that he caught. The play before, he dropped um, an open ball. Yeah. Like he was open, and he dropped the ball. And the very that could have easily spiraled. And I know for a fact, as the play where he caught the touchdown was developing, I could, I just know that there were a lot of big... Big accounts on Twitter. I know the trolls <laughs> were out. Full force. The, They're there, out in full force. There was going to be a post about Jalen Hyatt dropping a wide open pass, and everyone was going to get on. I was like, this is the guy Johnny said is going to be in the moment receiver. But, like, the, the very next play to go and catch a touchdown, go deep downfield like that, show to showcase that big play ability. That's mental resilience. That's what you want to see out of out of a rookie. Especially a rookie who has some expectations. I and, love it. And this coming week, they're playing the Jets in the Snoopy Bowl. And you knew the Jets were going to do this because they're the Jets. Okay. Aaron Rodgers is making his preseason debut. Of course. Of course. Now, there are... Some things that could happen in this game. Okay. Not a lot of them are good. I'm just going to be straight Okay. Up. Not a lot of them are very good. You got the potential of... Like, like, now, you know why the Jets are putting Aaron Rodgers in in a preseason game against the Jets. Of course. They attention. Wanna, they want to get buzzed. Want because attention. They're the, because they're the Jets and they're pathetic. Right. It's a pathetic attempt to get buzz. <laughs> yeah. And... You know, Jeff fans who have been watching their team for a long enough time. What one year Mark Sanchez got hurt in preseason because uh, it was Rex Ryan trying to win this preseason game against the Giants. <laughs> was it worth it? No. No. The preseason game. No, Not no, worth it. Like Mark Sanchez got hurt. Yeah. And including the Snoopy Bowl because Rex Ryan really wanted to win that game. <laughs> like so at, at all costs. Like, there are you you understand what I'm getting at here. Yes. There could be hypothetically, there could be a broken down play. The Jets offensive line doesn't hold up because news flash the roster isn't perfect like the media wants you to believe. Next thing you know, Kayvon Thibodeau could come in, hit him a little hard, and then next thing you know, he cracks his ribs. Yeah, or or cracks something, no, bruises like, something. Like a broken collarbone. Oh. Right? <laughs> like the, or on a scramble, he steps on it. Like he, he takes a bad cut, right. and he, something happens to his knee. He feels a pop in his knee. No. You understand like, how this could go badly. Right, a lot at stake here. Yeah, there is. I don't understand why they're doing it. Right. Well, you do. Attention, buzz. Yeah, there's no, clout. Whatever, there's no, whatever, there's whatever you want to call. Yeah, yeah, sure. Getting him in game reps, but dude, this is Aaron Rodgers. He knows what an NFL game feels like. Yes, he's played many of them. Yes. <laughs> the guys won a Super Bowl for God's sake. Grant yes, he has. Grant it's Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. That was a long time ago. That was a very long time ago. Dude, 2010. You know who did the halftime show that year? No, who did the, that? The Black Eyed Peas. Okay. Remember? What was the last time you heard of them? It's been a while. 
Wait, they're still alive? No, I'm kidding. Like, it's been a while. It's <laughs> yeah. been a while. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to this game, though. So this Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm like, I don't care. That Jets much. Giants. Jets fans are going to care a lot. Sure. Well, they got to get a glimpse of their, their savior or saviors. I think their <laughs> ultimate savior, Aaron Rodgers. Right. And- I, I I can't help but look at the ways that this could go wrong because it's the Jets. Sure. I, I'm I'm not used to things working out for them. Yeah. I'm used to the Jets being the Jets and right. doing Jetsy crap. Yeah. Because they're the <laughs> Jets. I listen. I know. We, I'm trying. Like I. But it's all Joe Namath making that deal with the devil. Yeah. Nobody wants to see this happen though. Nobody wants to see it happen. Nobody. But like it's. But it could. It could happen. Very well it's could. All I can think of. Right. Is Aaron Rodgers getting hurt during this? Can Canadian Can they put like a no contact jersey on him and just look? <laughs> there will probably be talk between Robert Sala, who is like one of the weakest head coaches in the NFL, by the way. And there's probably going to be some talk between Robert Sala and right. Brian Dable. Just, you know, a gentleman's agreement to... Like a gentleman's going to be like, hey, you don't touch my quarterback, right. you don't touch yours. Yeah. Although I guarantee if Daniel Jones takes a big shot on that opening drive... That oh, it's over. Then that's, that, that, that agreement's off. Yeah. That agreement's that, off. That deal goes out the window. Yeah. I, I'll be watching. This will be fun. It'll be a fun preseason game. Come on, uh, but I, entertaining I, at, le- like, at the I least. I mean, uh, sure. But I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna watch Jack games this year. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, we the, all are. The Monday Night Football game in Buffalo. So I'm, I'm probably gonna get together with friends for that. Game. Oh yeah, like that's gonna be a huge deal. Yeah, to Aaron Rodgers playing for the Jets. I understand how huge of a deal this is. Yeah, they've been the talk of the town. Dude. When was the last time the Jets had hype? I mean, the Jets. I mean, uh, Brett, Brett Favre. Time. The Jets always have hype. <laughs> they do. They're New York team. Yes. Uh, speaking of hype, uh, this is my drafted, not inherited fantasy team. Who the uh, hell one, is Rashad one, one to get your, your opinion on this. Now, granted, you know, some of these were late round picks. <laughs> Listen, come on. <laughs> so, okay, okay. You have, why do you have Lamar Jackson? Dude. You could trade. Oh, I, I, I got distracted in that auto drafted. So, I, listen, there's gonna be a bye week somewhere, <laughs> and I'm taking away yeah, him away yeah. from other teams. So, yeah, you're, you you could corner the market there. Yeah, you, know, you could, or I, I could trade him. You know, like I could trade him. You no, know, me personally, maybe I'd move Lamar Jackson up because uh, Josh Allen throws a lot of picks. Really, but you that, would put Josh Allen on the bench? No, I would trade him. Oh, trade Josh Allen. Yes. It's that not a done. bad idea. I do also, have also, two co- very competent also, quarterbacks here. Put Dalvin Cook ahead of Rashad White and put... Okay, scroll down. Let me see your bench. Okay. It's not... Listen, like, there's bench players, so just could, keep this in mind. These are late-round bench could players. Move, like Darnell Mooney to your flex if you want to. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm not. I haven't been very bullish on the Bears. You could move Odell back on to the flex if you want. That, there are a and lot of... O- Odell, was, again, late-round pick, but... Uh, low risk, high reward. He, dude, shall we say he's playing the Houston Texans? He, do you start Lamar in Week One? He's playing the Texans. Yeah, you're right, and Odell. Do you start Lamar Jackson in Week One? Then, like that is such. That's Garrett a... Wilson going. Uh, the Garrett Wilson. That I think he's gonna have a big year. That's, I'm. I'm banking on that. I'm banking no, no, I, on that. I can see Garrett Wilson getting over 1,500 yards. Oh, yeah. So for anyone who can't see this, uh, we'll go just with the main lineup: uh, Josh Allen, Austin Eckler, Rashad White, Garrett Wilson, Juju Smith Schuster. Juju's the guy. I'd uh, Pat, Pat Fryermuth at tight end. Dalvin Cook. Yeah, uh, Pat Fryermuth. That's a really. Good that's one. solid. He's been very consistent. Um, the Bills D and Justin Tucker. Although I, no, where, where did you draft Justin Tucker? He came in maybe I want to say the fifth or sixth round. Why did you draft a kicker in the fifth round, you C- dude? He saved my ass many times. That guy. I know he saved. Dude, like you don't draft. Nobody is thinking about drafting a kicker in the fifth round. Everybody else in your league probably thought you were. Oh. Probably. Who was on the board? Tell me. I can't. Re- I can't remember. You can't remember. I can't who remember. Was on the board, really. I'm. Dude, that guy's got me like he, he'll kick like five field goals, so that's worth fifteen points. Couple extra, like he's got me like eighteen points at times. Oh my 
Just the keep... Ravens are a really good red zone offense. They have Lamar Jackson. Oh my I know, God. I know. Listen, it was there, there is a I, second I there's a second man. Graham Gano was on the board and like, do I take him? That guy's reliable too, but you can't In you gotta take second Tucker. round. You gotta take you gotta take Tucker okay, over and Graham Gano. Justin Tucker and Graham Gano. Okay, first of all, I don't think I'm gonna draft a kicker this year. At I'm all? Gonna, I'm gonna go on the waiver wire for kickers. All right, good point. I that dude, I don't no, know. That, what you do is look that for guy's put me over a, the edge what, multiple what, times. That's you, why I got him. What you look for is a team with a crappy red zone offense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I are you doing are you drafting this year? Have you drafted? I haven't drafted. No, I'm I'm gonna draft when I when I get back to school. Okay. Okay. You're not taking Saquon Barkley with your first pick. <laughs> I'm not taking dude, I'm I no giants. No Zero giant, oh, really? No giant. Except maybe if Darren Waller's there in like the the fifth round. Yeah. No, Darren Waller's not going to be there. In the fifth. I'm going to be honest. I think, um, I'm going to be honest. I'm leaning toward taking Travis Kelsey early. I mean. I, I, I seem to have my heart set on Travis Kelsey. Also, if I get the first overall pick, I'm trading it. Really? I am going to be straight up. If I get the first overall pick, I'm trading it. Because in a snake draft, you're getting the first overall pick. Well, it, 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 it seems like a bad. Like, it, it seems like a, a. Also, like the the best player on the board, hypothetically, like the number one fantasy player in drafts, most of the time doesn't end up being the best. Yeah, uh, which would be Justin Jefferson this the, year. My, my friend got stuck with Jonathan Taylor last year. Yeah, and well, we saw how that worked out. I yeah I could yeah. I couldn't take the risk yeah, on him yeah, this year. Yeah, he was yeah. on the board. He couldn't take the risk. I don't know what's going to happen to him. I mean, hopefully he's he plays up to twenty twenty one stats. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't have him, so who cares? Yeah. 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 No regrets. So I it it's a weird team. No, I, I admit. I, no, I, I, a lot of. I'm banking oh, on a okay, lot of things okay, here. Dude, make Dalvin Cook your RB two, and make one of those receivers down there your flex. I can. I will do See, that. Rashad White. I don't even know who the hell he is. He's got some good projections here. So yeah, just, projections. I know. I know his projections. So like, yeah. He had 50 receptions. Wait, like, PPR, ESPN. Hmm. He did. I don't know if that's something that you'd put at like an RB two number like that. That doesn't. That's not a lot of hype. A lot of not, hype. That that's not one of your running backs. A lot of hype. So I we'll start that. <laughs> we'll so, we'll so, I'll keep you updated. I'll keep you updated. I mean that yeah that uh, also Juju is your wide receiver. You, you're gonna have to do some <laughs> shuffling. <laughs> I love you're just laughing at me. Like, what are you doing? But yeah, the, the, there I, are uh, I there have are the, good parts. Of, dude, Austin Eckler was my running back last year, and yeah, solid. Yeah, Austin solid. Eckler will always get you. He's a receiving back. So yeah, so you get more extra points for that. Huge. Yeah, I I, I was a uh, what what I can't stand though is Justin Tucker in the fifth round. I think I no, can. Fifth round, Justin I Tucker. I think it was a fifth. So, I can't. Don't quote me on that. I can't. You know, I guess I could pull it up, but I'm not going to. You're just gonna laugh at me. <laughs> oh God, Brian Cashman's presser. Cashman went on to say, everyone has had a hand in the team's struggles from top to bottom, and there will be a lot of internal assessments coming up, including himself and manager Aaron Boone. When we get <laughs> dude, there, everyone. No, I guarantee that Aaron Boone's going to be fired after. I, I mean, he deserves to be fired. <laughs> Aaron Boone will be fired, but Brian Cashman won't be. So. Wow. Well, oh, Cashman's got some something, something he's holding up for ransom. I don't know what it is, but yes. <laughs> yeah, but here we are. Game start coming up. So. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could take in a couple couple innings here. <sighs> I uh oh and, and being actually being in a game uh, I hate the pitch clock by the way but mm. yeah it was over far too early even with the ten innings mm. but that's just again that's my opinion I don't the pitch clock's not going away anytime soon so yeah not not happening <laughs> <laughs> not happening unfortunately I 
Baseball's not a time sport. It never has been. Yeah. I don't care if millennials don't have a big attention span. No, no it's not millennials. It's Zoomers. Oh, Zoomers. Okay, fair enough. No, Zoomers. Like, I'm talking like younger Zoomers. Right. Like iPad kids. Right. Like you know, like the like the kids who are like born with an iPad in their hand because right. their their parents are too lazy to like actually entertain them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, at least my parents put on like Pixar movies. Yeah. But once I had the Wii, like once I was seven, I was a self entertaining apparatus. I figured, yes. Well I you had many distractions. No, no, uh... the, the, all, all I did that I would spend whole days days sitting down in my basement or in my living room playing mario kart Wii time trials i love it and that's why you're that's why you're so good i mean i'm not i'm not like compared to everybody at iona i'm one of the best yes but like i'm the captain of the team for christ's sake right i've topped i've placed highly in every single tournament that that we've had on campus but our Luis Severino, everybody. <laughs> Luis Severino starting. This is the first Yankee game I'm watching, like, first pitch in months. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, this is fine. Also, turn off the volume. I can't bear to listen to Mike. Okay. Uh... You, you, you muted it before. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right corner. Yeah. My, all right. There we go. Let's, oh, let's my go to, God. Let's go to theater mode here. <laughs> How many runs? Seven point nine. Seven point nine eight ERA. <laughs> two and eight. <laughs> Twenty home runs allowed. Thirty walks. Sixty one Ks. Opponent oh. average. Three twenty nine. Oh, three twenty nine. I. I mean, who's even got a three twenty nine average in the major leagues right now? There's very few people. Uh, Ira Ooz of the the Marlins. Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. It's a short list. So, yeah. Oh my so. god. <laughs> 329. I haven't looked in the Severino statistics because They're bad. I, I, I don't like throwing up. <laughs> like that is a major pet peeve of mine. Just throwing up. Well, those that'll make you throw up for sure. Those yeah. stats. But the, I mean, there's no alternative right now, so Oh my god. And notorious for giving up many I don't I don't know what his first inning ERA is, but it's probably even worse than his first seven. inning ERA is like over fifteen. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. This, this should be interesting. Yeah, that should be this interesting. Is, this is gonna be something. Yeah. The top of this part, you want to talk about pace of play? Dude, this, is, this is gonna take a. All while. right. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right. I'm, I'm gonna practice my baseball play, okay. play here. Okay. And now leading off for the Nationals, C.J. Abrams. Slash line there, batting 250, 13 home runs with an OPS of 715. Everyone's ready down here in the Bronx. The first pitch from Severino is fouled back in 94 mile an hour fastball right down the heart of the plate. That's surely going to be sustainable. And we are underway in the Bronx. C.J. Abrams acquired from San Diego in the blockbuster Juan Soto trade, a former top prospect of San Diego, the old one inside low and inside count one and one the umpire scouting report which is always accurate ramon de jesus <laughs> is apparently pitcher friendly we're gonna see, <laughs> we'll see about that. which translates to we're gonna see strikes be called balls so the one one from severino two. chipped foul cutter inside to count now one and two See, I can do this for outside of Rocket League. Yeah, Higashioka behind the dish. <laughs> this is not legal, but like, I don't care. Nobody wants. Oh, we haven't had express written permission for Major League Baseball. The one and two pitch for and, Luis Severino. And oh, they called time because and oh, a pitch, pitch clock <laughs> violation, ladies a and pitch gentlemen. Pitch clock violation. All right, two and two. Championship caliber wow. operation, right? Wow. Here. Luis Severino was in a pitcher's count for once in his life. Now the two two. Swung on, hit in the air to deep right field. Oh. Stanton is there, however. I thought that was going <laughs> to the moon. It, Giancarlo Stanton playing right field. That's that's going to go great. Yeah. Surely he can run more than five miles an hour and walk at a pace faster than an old man. But anyways, the Yankees keys to the game, which they'll end up losing anyway. 
Stop the streak. Now here Score is early. Lane Thomas takes a strike on the outside corner to count 0-1. Lane Thomas putting together a solid year. 20 home runs and an OPS of 814. And a nice RBI total of 69. As he fouls back that pitch, Luis Severino, the fastball not really getting a lot of no zip. A lot of ticks. I see no zip there. Ninety four. He's sitting at about ninety four miles an hour. Very lifeless. I tell you, that's a body that has been decimated by injuries. So the O two on the way from Luis Severino. The Higashio pitch setting up low and outside, and this one grounded to short to the Italian kid Anthony Volpe, who throws two away Tom. very quickly, two ladies and gentlemen. Two away, Luis Severino. Two away. Seven pitches. Nobody on. Wow. Here be. is Joey Manassas coming up. Now, again, you talk about Luis Severino. This is a miracle. Him making it through two batters in the first inning. Although Joey Manassas is probably going to plant this one in the bleachers. Beautiful this is the night. First pitch to him. Right down the middle. Takes a strike, dude. 94 miles an hour. Uh, they just cut to kind of a wide shot of the stadium. Looking very beautiful out there. It is a balmy 73 degrees. Perfect night for baseball. The old one. Bounced Hello. in the dirt. 82 mile per hour slider. And the count is 1 on 1. Two away here in the first inning. Severino at nine pitches. <laughs> Here's the 1 1 to Manassas. Apparently it should be coming, but Severino's sitting there like an idiot. Never mind. The wine deals. Low and outside. outside. Count 2 and 1. 90 mile per hour cutter. Why is Severino throwing a cutter so much? I thought that, that's probably the problem with these Yankee pitchers. They keep forcing them to throw cutters. The uh, the uh, he's been see, he sees the ghost of Mariano Rivera, my friends. <laughs> the two one to Manassas. low count three and one. This is a guy who took a ninety four mile an hour lifeless fastball down the middle, and you can't throw strikes for some reason. Now the three one hitters count. This is gonna end up. Gotta be looking for fastball here. Oh, swing and a miss. That's a really good pitch. 84 right. mile per hour slider. Very nice. Right. Nicely right executed. There by Severino. Drop right off the table there. Now, the payoff. Three, Full count. Two. Full count. Gotta be looking for fastball right here. The stadium looking pleasantly empty. Kenny located. Now, here's the 3 2 from Severino. The payoff. Lined in the center field, Bader there, and Washington Nationals. A one, two, franchise. three inning. Fold your franchise, wow. Washington. Wow. How pathetic do you have to be to let Luis Severino in the year of our Lord 2023 <laughs> throw a one, two, three inning in the first? Mom, wow. shocking, shocking. Fold. Your franchise <laughs> right now forfeit the game. That might be the most pathetic thing I have ever seen. Wow. Well, 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 they all made contact. Do you have any idea how hard it is to not score on Luis Severino in the first inning? No, a score on Luis Severino, period. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any idea how ridiculously low the odds are that yeah. that was going to happen? Uh, the stuff did not look electric from my from it my vantage point. Lifeless. It looked pretty pretty standard. So you have the same vantage point. By the way. Oh right, yeah. We're both I mean, watching. you're a little closer <laughs> to the laptop screen. I guess. Yeah, but your eyes are better than mine. My yeah, eyes are old, yeah, dude. Yeah, I have twenty twenty vision. I do not. Yeah, you, you don't wear glasses though. I probably should at this point. It's getting hard to see things in the distance. Okay, the Yankees starting lineup, uh, DJ Limid, Aaron Judge, Glaber Limid. Torres. Um, Stan Benning, clean up. Um, old man Giancarlo Stanton, Harrison, Bader, Anthony Volpe, Everson Pereira, Kyle Gashioka, and Oswald Peraza batting ninth. And this is probably the best lineup they could put out tonight, Judge and Stanton. Although Stanton's not really a plus. Mackenzie Gore, who is about to have the best start of his career, 4.38 ERA. Number one is, I'm sorry, that's not a starting pitcher's number. That, <laughs> number that one? Is where, there are certain numbers in certain positions that just give me the ick. And number one is one of them? Yep. <laughs> Another guy from the Juan Soto. Team. Yeah, they, they got a boatload back, as they should have. We'll 
Here's DJ Lemid with his paltry 238 average. He takes a strike. Count on one. DJ Lemayu with a 680 OPS. Yeah, real championship caliber operation. He is on the hook for three more years after the season. So this is going to be real fun. The 0-1 to Lemayu. Inside. And he's getting paid how much for the next three years? $15 million. Wow, okay. $15 million per year. It's a lot of money. I mean, I was excited. The YouTube video is still off of me being super excited. Oh, I remember. Yes, I was here. Okay. <laughs> I was here. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Chop to third. Typical DJ LeMahieu at that. And that's a ground out. DJ LeGrand out. That's awesome. Here's Aaron Judge, a guy who I... If they throw strikes to him, they're, they're stupid. Yes. On no planet should anybody be throwing strikes Aaron Judge. Wait, like legit that, strikes, yes. Yeah. Is that former Yankee prospect Blake Rutherford? I, could, I believe it is. Here's Judge. Uh, kind of attacked him there. Yeah, 95 mile four seam fastball. It's an OPS. Inside. It's OPS over a thousand. <laughs> Just over a thousand. One zero zero nine, ladies and gentlemen. The corporate captain, as I like to call him. The corporate captain? <laughs> Dude, did you see that photo shoot that he did for Nike? Uh, I did not, no. He was wearing a Jordan ring. Oh. <laughs> Did you have any idea how much that infuriates me? But that that kind of put Judge on my shit list, like for now. Listen, I he's paying him a lot of money. He's gonna, he's gonna wear whatever they tell him to wear. No, but like you, you know that Michael Jordan photo where it's like him putting his hand on his face. Yes, like all the of money. course, very he famous tried photo. Recreating that. <laughs> I mean. What is there to like? What is there to say about that? Like that? That's awful. Listen, they're writing in very large checks. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I know, but like, it gives me the vibe that Judge cares more about money than winning. As he fouls off one, a perfect pitch to yes, send into the, the one and two, ninety-six the, mile per hour four belt. seam fastball. And the stadium, first inning, looking pretty full, yet again. Uh, the one two to judge. Inside oh, did inside the appeal? The he did not go. The catcher for some reason made an appeal. Doesn't hurt. Why not? On deck is Gleber Torres. Uh, the two two to judge. Foul the way. This uh, <laughs> this this stream brought to you by Five Hour Energy, for energy for every game. That's what you need to watch. <laughs> yes, that'll keep you awake during the game. The next two two to judge is out of the way again. Aaron Judge once again the only Yankee putting up solid at bats. Getting the pitch count up, I guess. Yeah, it's a good battle right here. Good battle. Now the 2-2, two -two, the next 2-2 two -two to judge. Fly ball, center field, and gone! See ya! Oh my! To the International Space Station! Wow. I, that, that go over like Monument Park or just, just a little bit to the right of it. Over... The Yankee bullpen, 431 feet projected distance. Oh, my God. 101.3 miles per hour off the bat. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge puts the Yankees on the board quickly with I his 25th home run. 25th home run. Well, let's watch the replay. Where, 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 where did this pitch go? <laughs> where did he throw it? Yeah, you weren't going to sneak that one by him. <laughs> Here's Glaber Torres, swing and a miss. Count 0 and 1. So that, that ball by Judge, man, that was crushed it. 431 that, that was feet. Absolutely, absolutely <sighs> impressive. Obliterated. Impressive. The 0 1 to Torres. Fouled away. 
So yeah, for some reason they decided to attack him. Oh, why um... would you leave that pitch there? <laughs> no, no, look at where this landed. Okay, not yeah, barrel, middle, middle, big what time. What are you thinking throwing that there? The pitch to Torres. Go to Torres, grounded to short. Abrams fires across the diamond in time. Two away. Can you show us where it landed? Yes, yes please. I know he hit it a Jesus. long way. <laughs> he crushed that thing, man. That thing was obliterated. That is long gone. Okay, there now, we go. Now, now you're going to see where it landed. Over the Yankee yep. bullpen. Here's Giancarlo Stan and his 196 average. He will line one right to short. And his batting average goes lower. No, in the inning, so but the, uh, Yankees one, up one zip in the in the first. They're one hitter ended up going deep. <laughs> because Mackenzie Gore was too much of a moron to just pitch around him. <laughs> All right. Hey, you can't you gotta be happy about that. Severino did not give up any runs in the first at a 1-2-3 inning. I don't really want them. I want that 10-game losing streak to happen. I want another terrible optics thing to happen in this team. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't care. I, I'd like to see Everson Pereira hit a home run. Like That's that's what I care about. Okay. At, at the end. Good luck with that. I, hey, it could happen. It could happen. Uh, yep. <laughs> I hate this team so much. Uh, when do you go up north? Uh, Monday. 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 I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep packing my shit, and then I'm gonna. I'm gonna head up on Monday. Um, a lot of my friends are already up there. Okay. And I'll probably be the last in the in our suite, to be honest, because everybody else is kind of local. Right. And a couple of. My friends moved in early. Okay. So I'm going to be gone. I'm probably going to hit traffic and then. I'm gonna... <laughs> All right. I mean, it's not like you're miles away, but. And and I'm going to, I'm going to be, uh, some of my friends are going to be there and it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'm going to be moved in. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to miss you here every Wednesday. Not going to lie. No, no I'm, I'm going to miss it too. I mean, I'm still going to be doing stuff. I know. I know. Well, keep us. Update where we can see you. I know you, you were streaming on a it weekly did. basis. Iona Esports. Yes. I'm always... For, okay, this is the Yankees' first lead since the second inning last... Last, last Monday? Last Monday. Last Monday. Okay. It's still early. You really want to see this 10-game losing streak. Yeah, I want to see I want to see it get bad. But yeah, I am once the once the regular season starts for Rocket League, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be streaming a couple times a week on Iona Esports to call their games. And hell of a stop. And like every every Wednesday, I mean, I, I, or that, at some point, like every week, I'm gonna be on WIUR Gales Radio on okay. YouTube every week. I do my little solo show for around half an hour a week. Where I just ramble about. About sports just like this, but a little shorter form. Yeah. Excellent diving stop. By DJ LeMickey. <laughs> LeMickey picks up, the, picks up the ball, he knocks down, and they get the out. Severino covering. One away. One away. Dom Smith. Dom Smith. Dom Smith is still in the major leagues <laughs> for the Nationals. Yes, and he and a little blooper to center field. Up there, track down Harrison Bader. All right, there. two away, quickly, quickly, two away. Got the Severino of old be back tonight. No, I swear to God that, that, that when I want them to lose, this is when Severino turns in a great performance. <laughs> It's because you're watching him. He knows. Yeah, it's because I'm watching him. He knows. Just to spite me. (laughs) 
Oh. Stone Garrett. He's an 805 OPS. That's I mean, Seeing a player with an OPS that starts with the number 8 is just baffling to me. It looks weird. It looks weird to me because I'm a Yankee fan. Right. <laughs> we, we, we just don't do offense. Oh, and when the pitch to Stone, nine part. He's going with the cutter, bounces in the dirt. One and one. Stone Garrett. The pitch fouled down the third baseline. Dude, One and two. Dude, the Nationals should genuinely fold the franchise. In, in Already? <laughs> yeah, they should. No, no. It's if, over. If Garrett strikes out here. No, if Garrett gets out in any way here, letting Severino go one, two, three, four, five, six through the first two innings, right. that's abhorrent. Uh, I, I would support a move back to Montreal. Sure. Uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, move back to Montreal. Yeah. I would support this. <laughs> two strikes. Get up, everybody. Get up off your seats. Oh two strikes, God. two outs. One, two. Nobody cares. Lined to Torres. Go back to Montreal. Dude, what the? <laughs> two very clean innings right there. Are you kidding you gotta me? Gotta love it. Oh, okay, I, I, wait. We're going to wait for Everson Prayer to come up. Okay. And then we'll... Then, then we'll, we'll make our judgment. Th okay. Then, then we'll end things off. Because I, okay. I, I want to watch one Everson Prayer. Okay. I would love to, too. But yeah, pretty much like my, my stuff on campus, I'm going to be... Obviously, I'm going to be playing, too, so... That'll be fun. There are going to be a lot of fun things. That yeah. I just, I mean, uh, I love that you have a, you have an esports room. <laughs> you have yeah, esports everything. Yeah, we have the, we have a program there. Streaming capabilities. I saw you have uh, like a, a whole station, like a, like a studio. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, I'm a the little place, jealous. The place, the place could use a couple upgrades, but. I, I can live with it. Yeah. Well, hey, if you ever need anything, I'm I'm here if you need gear or anything like that. Oh, always here. But uh, yeah, the just the fact that you have like an esports room that you can go and use, it's pretty awesome. Technically, it's just like still a club. We still roll with like a tryout system. Like we still like whenever we get players, we find out because like during tryouts and like word of mouth. Right. It's always. It's always that. Sure. Well, that makes sense. You gotta make sure everyone's up to par, right? Oh yeah. And how often are you calling matches? I might call. I think I call the matches for all three leagues that our Rocket League team plays in. So, I am gonna be calling when the season starts. I'm gonna be calling two. Matches on Monday nights, and I'm going to be. Oh calling, wow! Okay, I'm going to be calling one match on Wednesday nights. Amazing. So that's that's what I'm going to be doing for the for the Smash or not Smash for Rocket League. I don't. I casted a couple of Smash games, right. but like that was kind of. Eh. Here's Harrison Bader. He falling one, well. falling one straight back. Um, dude, the fact that two forty nine looks like a good average on this game. OPS six six six, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for Harrison Bader. Evil, the evil OPS. Ah, uh, yep. Good news, it's gonna not be six 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 after this. And he yanks one foul. Yankee Stadium looking kind of barren. It's still, it's the bottom of the second. It's perfect weather though. Everyone should be out for this. Oh, and the O2 pitch outside. Nobody One and two. Be, nobody should be paying legit money to watch this game. <laughs> you know they are. It's New York. Uh, these are all people who couldn't care less about baseball. And yet they're there. And look at all the people in that front row. None of them are wearing jerseys. As Bader... Looped in the center. Bader <clears throat> has reached base. God. Damn it! This team's gonna win. This team's gonna win tonight, just to spite me. I was talking yeah. about that. I was making fun of them for being on a ten-game losing streak, and now this this is my comeuppance. Well, what else? What else is new? The gods love to taunt you. Yep. <laughs> the sports gods love to taunt you. 
Here's Anthony Volpe. This is a guy I wouldn't mind seeing tear the cover off the ball the rest of the way. Anthony Volpe. Oh, Whoa. rushed it back. 95. Oh. oh, 95 mile per hour fastball. Up and in. Sending a message <laughs> to the young Anthony Volpe. Oh, yeah, that's a brush drag pitch right there. Asshole. Off the plate. Get off the plate. <laughs> Anthony Volpe getting his uniform Your dirty. Your team is losing to the 2023 New York Yankees. Yeah. Right Swinging out of his shoes on that pitch. Count one and one. <laughs> Look at the limbo pose right there. <laughs> Look at the flexibility. Look at that. <laughs> they love using that slow-mo cam on yes. Yep. They try to pick off Bader. <laughs> Is Bader a, a threat to run? Yeah. Okay. He can run. Right. The 1-1 one, one to Volpe. And the pitch. Oh. oh. <laughs> and Beta ran and stole out. Oh, oh. my God, he has to run back. Almost got picked off second. <laughs> that was so funny. Why would you make a wide turn to third on that? I guess. Because <laughs> it went to the backstop. Yeah, but it bounced right back. That was a... Uh, uh, <laughs> he rounded second. Well, he was fell anticipating down. that the ball would die there. Yeah. I, I understand why he, why he All right, possibly third. could have taken third. No, he would have taken third if the ball went all the way and, like, stopped there. And Rounded to third. On the third. And he gets the out. Oh, Bader ended up going the third. Yeah. Oh. I guess he Here's went on the Everson Pereira with a chance to drive there we in go. his first big league There run. we go. All he needs to do is put it up in the air. Oh, yeah, Bader's got wheels, man. He went on that throw. I, I love it. Here is Everson Pereira. Tearing the cover off the wall in the minors. I got, I got a good feel. All he's got to do is put it up in the air. Grounded to short, short, and of course Bader gets nailed at home. Oh, oh, oh he wait. dropped the ball! Oh. Dropped the ball! Oh. oh! Yankees up two zip. Everson how'd, Pereira! How do you score that? His first big league ribby. How do you score that? <laughs> As a fielder's choice. Wow. Basically kicked the ball out of his hand, oh but hey. God. Had him nailed. He was was he blocking the plane? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, they may have given it to him upon appeal. Doesn't matter, though. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Hey, you got to. Hey, they'll take it. Save that ball. Oh Save that ball. First. That's, that's his first uh, big league. Our ribby. You got a ribby. <laughs> oh. All right. Hey, this is. I, I I I don't know if this tanking losing streak's happening, but hey, this Yankees up two zip in the second. Kyle Igashioka, ladies and gentlemen, oh, man. what can he do with a man on first? Swing and a miss. Swung right through that fastball. Oh, and two. They got bats like that, or why I'm not too bullish on Pereira as a major leaguer. The plate discipline isn't there. Right. Again, dude, the high strikeout rate in the Myers, that that just irks me. The wire's getting caught in my foot. <laughs> As you can anticipate, there are a lot of wires in this room. There is. You just can't see them. Un <laughs> unseen wires. Unseen wires. The one and two to Higashioka. All right. The pitch. High and outside. Two and two. There's two and two. I mean, this is... <laughs> Of course, these assholes are winning right now. <laughs> just your luck, Cameron Woolley. Yeah, just, just your luck. luck. Just They're giving luck. you a good send off. <laughs> it's 
It's fought off. Still two and two. And the pitch. The Tetsu to Higashioka. Gore winds, deals. Popped foul. Count still even at two all and right. two. You guys are fighting off pitches. Every all all of them. This is a terrible Nationals team too. Yeah. These are two bad teams going at it. <laughs> the battle for the bottom. Battle for the basement, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy. So Next pitch to Higashioka. Swung on, hit in the air to right center field. And... Oh, oh he dropped, dropped the ball! The ball is dropped, ladies and gentlemen. And... <laughs> Pereira at third, Higashioka at second. Wow. This is... Wow. Again, I talked about two bad big league teams going at it. Even if you can consider them big leaguers. <laughs> That's the type of play the Yankees would make. I expect the Yankees to do that. <laughs> I got it. I got it. No, no, no. I don't got it. Oh. <laughs> They're just laughing at you. They're laughing at you. They don't want to give you this 10-game losing streak. There are high schoolers who make that play. Right. We could have made that play. The, the we would have made that play. The need to fold their franchise. How is Mackenzie Gore on the ropes against this Horrific lineup. I don't know, Cameron. The, the, I don't the, know. They're about to go through. The, they're about to turn over the lineup in the second inning. That's if Peraza doesn't hit into a double play. Yeah. Which, I mean, runners on second, third, one out. It, it's possible. This Yankee team, if any major league baseball team, like air quote major league baseball team, can hit into a double play with runners on second and third, it's the 2023 Yankees. Say in third, one out. Oswald, Oswald Peraza. Oswald Peraza. That's See if he can do something here. The kid's been waiting for it. The first pitch to him. Upstairs count one and O oh on Oswald Peraza. Although you gotta figure you can just walk him and DJ Omega will ground him. Yeah. <laughs> that that would be the move, but uh, he's. <laughs> Here's the 102 Peraza. You know, pitch around your number nine hitter. <laughs> it looks like he's doing looks like that's what he's doing. He's throwing him garbage. Dude, Peraza's more of a threat than LeMahieu to drive in a couple of Yeah. Runs. Here's the 202 Peraza. Pitch count, pitch clock winding down. Inside uh, for a strike. Questionable call, but close. Borderline, borderline. Two and one. So here is the 2 1 to Peraza. Pitch clock at five. Gore winds, deals, and low and, low and inside. Three, three and one. one to Peraza. You got to figure he's going to get a pitch to hit here. I tell you. You would think infield in. This is a pathetic team right here. <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you end up getting the team worse than the Yankees. the Yankees? Here's the 3 1 to Peraza. He won't. Way. Him. So here's High DJ LeMay getting ready to ground a new double play. <laughs> Are you calling it right now? Yes, DJ LeMay okay. is grounding a new double play. Okay. Watch him in a grand slam. No, no, no he's going to drive in at least two no, because I think he's going to yeah, hit base a hit. double play. Okay. He, no, he's, he's going to fight off. Like, there's going to be a nice little knock to center field. Because the, the, this team, I like I, this team wants to keep me bases are juiced, ladies and gentlemen. Bags are packed for DJ Mayhew. Way inside, low and in. I mean, jeez, dude, give him something. Round into a double play. Though, uh, as evidenced by this game, Mackenzie Gore can't really pitch. So, here's the 102 DJ Mayhew. Up for a strike. Count one and one. 90 mile per hour slider. 
Gets the top of the strike zone. One and one. One one to LeMahieu. Big at bat here. The delivery. High and outside. Upstairs, two two and, and one. one. I mean, nowhere to put him. Nowhere to put him. Nowhere to put him, man. Especially you got the Hulk coming up. And, uh... oh, 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 oh. That would be a bad situation. Now here is the two, one foul the way. Count even at two and two. Yankees with bases loaded are experts of getting themselves out of bases loaded jams. Of course, I'm talking about they hit themselves out of the gym. Yes. All right. The pitch. The 2 2 to DJ LeMahieu. Strike three. Backwards up K. High, backwards K. Backwards K. All right, here we go, ladies and, and gentlemen. Here's Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Strolling up the to the plate. The base plate. is loaded and two men out. That was a strike. That was yep. a, that was a no damn doubt. good pitch. Must have been looking fastball. Watch Boone get ejected because of that. <laughs> Here we go. Here's Judge. They'd be out of their mind to attack him here. Nope. I mean, shoot. <laughs> Put him on. Put him on. Take one run instead of four. Give him the Bonds treatment, dude. The Bonds treatment. I mean, here's the one out of Judge. The pitch. Oh, my Driven God. He hit another deep. one. <laughs> oh, my God. Field. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Oh, my God. Aaron Two Judge. Consecutive with... of the home run. <laughs> Aaron Judge. Uh, that is five RBIs. Five, five RBIs. Five RBIs in two innings. Five RBIs in two innings. Why? 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're not getting your 10 game losing streak. Jackasses are going to win. You are not. And quickly, it's six zip. Uh, oh, Cameron God Woolley. God damn it. <laughs> you got, you did not get your wish yet again. And yeah. perfect send off. <laughs> right. Screw these guys. Yeah. Screw and, this and, game. Uh, and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> fifth career grand slam for Aaron Judge. And uh, a, a perfect send off to the, the the summer season of the Camera Willie Show. Oh, so, God yeah, damn it! All <laughs> right. So for the last time until December, I'll be coming back home for Christmas. So from Ming Chen and a shared universe podcast studio, I am Camera Wooly. And until next time, stay classy, New Jersey.